Today's guest is John Dean. While John is an advisor for various venture capital firms in the U.S. and overseas, he makes time to give back to the community through nonprofits such as Entrepreneur Foundations of Hawaii and Silicon Valley Community Foundation. John, you know, the Entrepreneur's Foundation, could you tell us a little bit more about that and your involvement, please? Oh, no, I'd very much like to. The Entrepreneur's Foundation is a, a foundation that I'm involved with in Hawaii and with others. And the, the thought there and the reason for uh, creating this organization is to work with the startup companies uh, in, in Hawaii, uh, technology, life science, but other companies that are um, building a company and looking eventually for what we call a li liquidity event, and that would be to sell eventually uh, to a third party or to go IPO, uh, public offering, initial public offering. And what we ask of these uh, companies is to donate some of their stock, a small amount of their stock, uh, to the Entrepreneurs Foundation. And in return, uh, through our executive director, Leanne Miyasato, is that we work with them to help get their employees involved in the community. And if you think about that and what I've said earlier in the program, we think that getting the employees involved in the community is going to build a greater team and going to help them in being great companies. Um, at the liquidity event, let's assume it's a sale or an IPO, we're hoping that that initial grant of stock that we got uh, is up in value, let's say 5x. So if the grant's $50,000, and again, this isn't cash, this is a um, non-cash item, although there is dilution, but $50,000 worth of stock, let's say it's a 5x uh, worth $250,000. What we do then is uh, we, well, the company, first of all, gets a full tax deduction for cash now of 250000 And that's IRS allowed, and it's a gross-up uh, of the initial investment. Second is we give half of that $250,000 back to the company in the form of a 501c3. So now they've started their own nonprofit organization within the company. So it's a great way to seed new nonprofit organizations in Hawaii. And um, to date, we can go on our uh, website, and you'll see a host of companies that have already joined the program. What do they actually do with the funds once uh, they're returned and companies had a liquidity event? Well, what they, what they do is it's not, they can't bring those monies back onto their balance sheet. So a 501c3 is a nonprofit, uh, and what we did, uh, and what I've done in all my previous organizations, is form these 501c3s, and put employees uh, within the company in charge, and that's then you begin the grant making process of looking for ways to give back to the community. Um, that could be habitat for community. That can be for housing for abused women, as I mentioned earlier. There's a whole host of good co causes, and this is a way not only get employees involved in terms of volunteering, giving some of their time, but also making cash contributions that are so needed for, for those organizations. Can you give a real-life example of an entrepreneur foundation in another area, since this one is newer in Hawaii, where it's really created some great value for the community? Yeah. The, the founding uh, entrepreneurs, uh, EF, Entrepreneurs Foundation, is in Silicon Valley, uh, with Gib Myers of Mayfield, and I had the good fortune of being one of the founding directors to the program. That's how I brought the program here, is basically modeling everything, or not everything, but a good part of it. And uh, they have over a 100 uh, portfolio companies that have participated in the program. They probably had 10 liquidity events to date, worth several million dollars. And so half of those monies have gone back to the companies, and then the other has been used to fund the ongoing operations of EF, Silicon Valley. So what are you looking to do with the University of Hawaii in this Kipapa lecture series and some of the other initiatives you have going on? Uh, separate from EF Hawaii, yeah, I've been involved uh, with the University of Hawaii Business School in a, um, a program It's called uh, the Kipapa series. And uh, the goal there is to bring uh, speakers um, to Hawaii, and for those speakers usually to focus on their successes, and that can be great entrepreneurs that have built great companies or businesses, how do they do it, and to open that to questions at the end. In addition, uh, we've had panels 
So I've worked to bring in a panel that was a group of lawyers, but they were Silicon Valley lawyers of the different firms that had worked with the technology companies. So what's their perspective on the market and how to build great companies? We've done it uh, a tech panel, and the tech uh, these would be venture capitalists focused in technology and then sharing their experiences and opening it up. And then lastly would be in the life sciences area and uh, venture capitalists, mostly Silicon Valley, bringing them here. Uh, we've had speakers such as Guy Kawasaki uh, from uh, Hawaii. So what do we have to look forward in the future? Uh, for Hawaii, in terms of entrepreneurship, I would uh, predict you've got um, some wonderful opportunities. It's The path is not going to become easy. I think it's been difficult to date and will continue for companies. Uh, the state has been, uh, I think, uh, supportive in terms of trying to recognize these opportunities. And I think going forward, we're going to need the continued support of the Chamber of Commerce, the university, uh, the government, in ensuring that there's the support organizations there to help build a community of startups that could be great contributors giving back to the state of Hawaii over the next 10, 15, 20 years. Thank you so much, John, for joining us today on Greater Good Radio Hawaii. For more information on today's show, please visit us online at greatergoodradio.com. This is your host, Evan Leong and Carrie Leong, saying please join us next time for another episode of Greater Good Radio Hawaii.